Well, for those of you that like to see shit thoroughly debunked, this video is for you. Those that like the rants and my tomfoolery, well, you should pass on this one. In this video, I'm going to be debunking a lot of claims about employment and wage oppression that women face in the modern world. So let me just take you through how I got started on these particular claims that we're going to look at. I made a video of a retarded feminazi, and here's a short clip of it. And this thing is uh, the existence of the term uh, feminazi. And frankly, I'm baffled that the word like that even exists in today's society. Oh yeah, you would have thought that the Allies would have dropped the term after Hogan escaped Stalag 13. On YouTube, the nut job here, he goes by Alkison Super, but he also has another account under the name of Old School Simpsons. I just call him Schultz because this weak-minded fucker reminds me 100% of the Sergeant Schultz from Hogan's Heroes. Older folks will know who I'm talking about. If you don't know who Schultz was, he was a Nazi POW guard that was famous for saying, I know nothing! Or, I see nothing. He's a real fitting caricature of feminism and its unwillingness to look at evidence right before its very eyes. So anyway, in my comment section, I get basically invited to defend my video on a forum where Schultz hangs out. It's a social justice warrior echo chamber. And about 20 of these nutless wonders went after me with all sorts of insults. Which is fine, I don't care, I dish out my fair share of insults. But at the end of the day, I try to include rational argument and evidence to support my positions. These lazy shits, almost to a man, had no interest in backing up any of their assertions, or even recognizing when I conceded to some of their claims. They were fucking ridiculous. Anyway, Schultz goes by Old School Simpsons, the acronym being OSS, which is almost ironic. Uh, his Twitter account is OSS underscore TXT. I'm not trying to dox him or anything. It just happens that he keeps popping up in my comment sections and, and in my Twitter discussions. So after this video is released, you'll probably see him. But anyway, on this social justice website, it's actually a, it's actually a fan site for the cartoon The Simpsons. Anyway, there was one person that tried to back up his claims with some evidence. His central issue had to deal with the wage gap, so let's go see what I said to get the issue going. It starts out on post number 135. By the way, I'll put a link to the forum in the show notes. It's the unbalanced look at history that cherry-picks its facts and always fails to look at the vast body of history and context that makes feminists such despicable creatures. Today, women are not oppressed in the U.S., and yet Tumblr, BuzzFeed, and HuffPost jerks go on propagating all sorts of lies that the honest feminists have debunked. AAUW, that's the American Association of University Women, debunking the 70 cents per dollar pay gap comes to mind. So the Spruce Moose, he responds here if you go down to post number 140, and he says it's a funny... It's funny that anti-feminists always cite the AAUW when this is the most recent thing I can find with them. And then he links to a report right here, and we'll go ahead and take a look at that. So you have to fart around after you click on that link, but you can get a PDF of the report. This is what it looks like. And from paragraph two of the foreword, it reads... The American Association of University Women has been on the front lines of the fight for pay equity since 1913. AAUW members were in the Oval Office when President John F. Kennedy signed the Equal Pay Act of 1963 into law. And more than 50 years later, we continue to lead the push for policies and legislation to encourage and enforce fair pay in the workplace. Well, I don't know how you feel about the source, but I think it could be a little biased towards promoting women causes no matter what. But we'll keep going. So let's move on here. Page in the introduction. 
Did you know that in 2014, women working full-time in the United States typically were paid just 79% of what men were paid, a gap of 21%. The gap has narrowed since the 1970s due largely to women's progress in education and workforce participation and to men's wages rising at a slower rate. But progress has stalled in recent years, and the pay gap does not appear likely to go away on its own. Not a single citation for any of that. I think the point of this was to show how oppressed women were in 1974. Just the opening propaganda salvo. All right, next page. Oh, now it's a not a woman's issue, it's a family issue. It may or may not be, but we're just talking advocacy here. Here they want to tug at your heart, saying that the gender pay gap can contribute to poor living conditions, poor nutrition, and fewer opportunities for children. That doesn't sound very scientific to begin your paper with. Maybe as a conclusion that would have been appropriate. Okay, and here it explains the pay gap difference. This is the difference between men and women's medium earnings, usually reported as either earnings ratio between men and women or as an actual pay gap as defined below. The mean value is the middle value with the equal numbers of full-time workers earning more or less and earning less. It says here that the pay gap is a little smaller if you, if you go week to week. So if the weekly numbers are more accurate than the annual numbers, then guess what? It's not 79%, it's 81%. But which number do they highlight? The 79%. Therefore, we're showing our bias, aren't we now? Well, then they talk about where the data comes from. Then they ask the question, is the pay gap really about women's life choices? They talk about their 2012 study. After 10 years after graduation, the pay gap widened. And they admit, in the part, these pay gaps do reflect men's and women's choices, especially the choice of college major and the type of job pursued after graduation. For example, women are more likely than men to go into teaching, and this contributes to the pay gap because teachers tend to be paid less than other college graduates. No news here. And here's the retarded part of it. Economists often consider this portion of the pay gap to be explained, regardless of whether teachers' wages are considered fair. It's not like a free market system or, or anything like that. It's not like, hey, uh, you can come here and teach for such and such money, uh, no, I would rather go into a different field and get paid more. Uh, no, we don't have a free market. Uh, what the hell is wrong with you, AAUW? Fuck. Yet, not all of the pay gap can be explained away. They cite their own study that said that 7% in the difference in earnings of male and female college graduates once at, one year after graduation was still unexplained. And then the 2007 study uh, that they're still quoting here, it's saying 12%, and they're not saying that they have any new information that debunks any of this. And then they got a political cartoon in here. Yeah, this is a scholarly work. Jesus Christ. This isn't propaganda at all. Yes, I agree that the... Equal pay for equal work is an idea that we should definitely think about. And the fucking cavewoman's being all bitchy about it. Yeah, this is fucking great. Okay. Uh, so we get to our first bar graph, and this is just all men against all women. No news here. Race and ethnicity, the big deal. It says here the gender pay gap also grows with age. 
I guess women are retiring early or, or taking easier jobs earlier. I don't know. And then it's just got a bunch of unsighted nonsense here. In 2014, for full-time workers ages 20 to 24, women were paid 92% of what men were paid on a weekly basis. Overall or in the same occupation? What? We don't know. It doesn't say. Uh, then it breaks it down by the week instead of annually, but it's all men against all women again, just different age groups. Breaks it down to education. Nothing new there. And it talks about student student debt. What the hell's that got to do with anything? I guess we're supposed to feel all sorry for women borrowing more money or something or not paying it off as quick. It says, in nearly every line of work, women face a pay gap, but they don't say how much that is. It could be just due to the hours. Again, they admit that it's the occupations that is the major factor behind the pay gap. Occupations. Uh, not discrimination. It shows the gap in selected occupations. This is the first good bit of information that we got, got, but we don't know how much it is based on experience. We don't know how much extra these other people are working in hours. It doesn't take in all the factors in at all at once. None of these charts, not a goddamn one of them. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't do a what do they call it, a cross tab that I can see? It's just a bunch of, every one of these paragraphs here is just a bunch of more propaganda trying to, trying to make, trying to make it sound like something's going on, but they're really not saying anything. Here's the number of states with equal pay provisions. So fucking what? Do you have any proof that that has anything to do with the wage gap? Jesus Christ. No. And what you should do if you uh, experience experience uh, discrimination, what you're supposed to do, and then a bunch of citations. I did when I did I did check a couple of these citations. The first two I checked. The one was behind a paywall, and the second one had old data. Jesus Christ, I can't even believe they cited it for this paper. But overall, this paper does absolutely nothing to debunk any information that came before. Nothing. It, it, it cites its own 2012 as if it's accurate. It cites its own 2007 if it's accurate. It doesn't cite any studies that it says are inaccurate. And every chance it gets, when it gets a chance to display the uh, wage gap, it gives you the worst number, the 79% annual number instead of the 81% uh, weekly number. There's no new information here. So, Moose, if this is the best you got, you got shit. There's nothing here. There's literally nothing here that we didn't know before. Well, I take that back. If this information is right, the raw wage gap has shrunk by 2%. And if all the other variables hold true, that means instead of a 5 to 7% or a 5 to 7 cent wage gap, we've got a 3 to 5 cent wage gap. That is unexplained. So all you did was reaffirm the study that I gave you, except that the numbers go to disprove your point even more when you're talking under a 10% pay gap and the needle moves 2%, that's a 20% improvement. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm going to cite this one now. This one's even better. Jesus Christ. Did you even fucking read this thing before you tried to bullshit me with it? Fuck you. Okay, let's go back to the... Uh, no Homer's website and Spruce Moose uh, 
gives me some links of other information to check out. Uh, but before that, I want you to note that here I I cite the CONSAD report and that the pay gap is between five to seven cents on the dollar. Potential discrimination, but unproven discrimination, according to CONSAD. All right, and so he says, well, that's the CONSAD report, which has faced criticism over its methodology. Well, I haven't heard any, but let's go look. Okay, 404 not found. That's not good. Oh, look at the URL. Amptunes. What the fuck's this? Dooch, ampersand, I'm a cartoon, a Portland, Oregon cartoonist website. He does cartoons for leftycartoons.com. <laughs> Barry Douche, Barry Douche. <laughs> A fucking cartoonist is the fucking guy that's discredited Consad's fucking scientific study? Fuck you! Jesus Christ! Uh, Media Matters, okay, well, they're lefty too, but let's take a look at what they gotta say. Okay, conservative media attempts to disprove the wage inequality between Men and women fall flat. This is from May 2, 2012. Okay. Looks like you got a Republican. Who is that? Uh, I can't remember her name. Let's see. Yeah, okay. It's They're saying it was 77 cents. That's what Khan said says. As to the raw number, Wall Street, Gen- Wall Street Journal says women earn less because they work for fewer hours. Well, that's true partially. Doesn't explain the whole thing. Yeah, it's hardly a surprise that someone who works more also earns more and picks a harder career. Ah, okay, so here they're fucking citing the fucking study that I gave you <laughs> as proof that these Republicans are wrong. I'm not, or these conservatives, I'm not these people making this these claims up here. I'm this guy. I'm fucking saying this is the truth. Jesus Christ, dude, did you even fucking read this? Fuck, here's the concept report. Dude, this is, I am the one making the fucking, this argument. And you're fucking sending me to an article that says that this fucking concept report proves these fucking Republicans up here or conservative people are wrong in their claims. I'm not making their claims. Fuck. I'm making this claim here, bozo. Jesus Christ. Okay, so you sent me to Media Matters, a kind of a lefty outfit, and they support what I say. All right, that's awesome. Uh, and then there's a... God, or how about we talk about the DOL God that... Felt absolutely wrong to type out as a Brit. Publishing a blog going over myths and reality of the wage gap. Where they admit it exists. Okay. The, all right. We've got a blog from the U.S. Department of Labor. It does look like a DOL. Legitimate. It's one author. June 7th, 2012. She says, myth. Saying women only earn 70 cents on the dollar is a huge exaggeration. The real pay gap is much smaller than that even if it exists all right let's see if she explains it fairly the size of the pay gap depends on how you measure it yep the most common estimate is based on differences in annual earnings yep that's the one that's the raw number 
Another approach is to use the weekly earnings data. All right, and that's the one that closes it that we don't hear about very often. I wonder why that is. No matter which number you start with, the pay differences in pay for women and men really add up. According to one analysis by the Department of Labor's chief economist, a typical 25-hour work full-time would have to already have earned 5000 less over the course of her working career than a typical 25-year-old man. Well, let's look at this analysis. Yeah, I've already looked at this um, report. There's nothing in here that contradicts uh, CONSAD. It's just basically, again, all the same arguments, jumble them around, but nothing changes. If you want to point to something specific here in the 70-page report, uh, that debunks CONSED, go ahead. Uh, here it is. There's, they're quoting the raw 70 cents for every dollar. Uh, do they go in here? Do they uh, correct for women choosing to work as secretaries in... Um, teachers, no, they talk about tax credit, they talk about tax credits, extending unemployment. Uh, there's, there's just no fucking data in here. All of this is, my friend, is a piece uh, to get women to vote for the Obama administration. Okay, uh, but if you could, if there's something in there that's compelling, let me know. I, I've already looked at it. I, I didn't see anything at all. 60% is explainable by differences between workers or their jobs. Let's just get out the calculator. So let me know if I'm doing the math wrong here. You got a 23 cent gap. So we'll just say 23, and we want to know what 60% uh, of that is. So times 60%, uh, 13.8 uh, goes away. So we go 77 plus 13.8. Wow, and we're at, we're at right at what Consad said at the low end of it. Congratulations. Discrimination is the best explanation of the remaining 10%. Okay. Notice how they, they quantify it as 40%, but it's really 10% of the gap. Oh, guess what? You can't, you can't get this to this study. Wow, I wonder why that is. Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, okay, and then there's some other commentator she's referring to here. Oh, fuck me, Slate. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to fucking look. They refer to this article that women earn 91 cents for every dollar a man earn if you control for life choices. Well, that's pretty close to concept. That's pretty close to <laughs> this. Oh, gee. You haven't debunked anything. But let's look at this here. 2000 study by Francine Blah and Lawrence Kahn. Um, there's no link to the study. It refers to the AAU studies. Uh, this, I'm sorry, but this, 
This doesn't debunk it. I mean, so you're arguing, Consed said it was five to seven cents on the dollar, and this newspaper article citing a study that we can't look at, uh, who is citing a 2007 study by two people instead of Consed Corporation, which the Department of Labor did, is saying that it's nine cents. Well, okay, you know, if you want to get that to me, I'll, I'll look at it. But it's not 77 cents, is it? It's 91. All right, that, that's enough of that guy. There's nothing there. Uh, here's the study suggesting that there's a pay gap, even if the life... Okay, well, let's take a look at it. Oh, surprise, it's the same fucking study that you can't see. It's a 2007 study, but they don't fucking tell us. They just tell us the authors. They don't even tell us the name of the study. For fuck's sake. Jesus Christ, this is the flimsiest fucking defense I've ever seen. Gender bias women face even after attempting to get into many fields. Okay, now that is a good fucking point. If they, if they were trying to get into good, pay, good paying fields and they're not getting the jobs, then fuck yeah, that, that would tend to show discrimination in that five to seven cent range or three to, three to five cent range now according to AAUW's latest all right, let's see what we got here. Newspaper article. It's not a study. Here's the groundbreaking study. Hopefully we can see it. Ah, here we go. Despite efforts to recruit and retain more women, a stark gender disparity persists within academic science. Abundant research has demonstrated gender bias in many demographic groups, but has yet to experimentally investigate whether science faculty exhibit a bias against female students that could contribute to the gender disparity in academic science. So we're just talking academic science. We're not talking the whole, the whole nationwide, worldwide science, just academic. Okay. Academic science is a big part of science, though, so I'll, I'm still willing to look at it. In a randomized double-blind study, oh my fucking God, the sample size is 127. For fuck's sake. Anything that this study finds at all is only fucking evidence that you should fucking study it further. 127 sample size that applies only to academia Fuck. This fucking runs counter to uh, other studies. When was this done? Received, this was received for July 2012. There's a study um, more recent than this that, I'll see if I can find it, that says the exact opposite. Oh, here's the whole text, man. Okay, I took a look at it. Uh, this isn't a bad little study. Um... You know, I'm not a statistician, uh, but the sample size is just too small to really draw any conclusions uh, and extrapolate that to the entire nation. Although, if these results are true, do a bigger study that uh, had a much larger sample size and reach the government and private sector, not just academia. Uh, one of the things that I noticed was... Right here, it is noteworthy that female faculty members were just as likely as their male colleagues to favor the male students. That is unfortunate to see here, but again, there's, there's studies to the contrary. So let's see if we can find those. I'm going to go ahead and pause here and see if I can find that study for you. I uh, found the study. It's at the same organization, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, um, this is a more recent study. It was approved on March 5th, 2015, and I think the other one was a 2012. Uh, the sample size is, uh, 
what? 873, and the other one was, what, 270? I mean, it was like four times the size. And they found a two-to-one preference for women by faculty of both genders across both math-intensive and math non-math-intensive fields. With the single exception of male economists who showed no gender preference. So, you know, leave it to the bean counters. I mean, <laughs> wherever they're going to get the best beans, they're going to get them. They're not going to be fooled. And then the full article is available to hear you. It's a PDF. And, you know, again, I looked at this. And again, I'm no statistician, but... What you've got is two relatively small studies, but the one that shows the preference for women is the bigger study and the more recent study. And that doesn't necessarily prove that it's wrong, but it does kind of put the ball back in your court. You're going to have to have something a little bit better than your study because this study is a better study. Uh, as far as I can tell, if you can find a hole in it, you know, you go ahead and let me know. Okay, and here's a report from the International Labor Organization, a branch of the UN. Okay, I I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't know it, the UN is the lionest motherfuckers ever on the planet. But we'll look at it. Okay, we're looking at this Women and the Future, Beijing, Plus 20 and Beyond. Okay, 2.7 billion people of working age or affected. 50% of the world's population. All right. I'm talking about the United States. Jesus Christ. Of course they don't make as much money in Saudi Arabia. They're not allowed to work, are they? Christ. Dude, I'm talking about our countries, you know, English speaking. What the fuck? Do you want us to go to war against Beijing? Fuck me. God. And besides, it wasn't a scientific paper anyway. It's just a position paper of some nut job at the UN. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you brought this one up. This one is a kind of an article. It's not a study. It's just a scholarly paper. Uh, they don't have any original data here at all. They're just making arguments that discrimination has gone down and down and down. Uh, there is some still remaining discrimination. It's going to be hard to ferret out because most of the overt stuff is gone. Another thing that they talk about in here, uh, I don't know, somewhere, you know, even with the female lawyers, they decided to work less hours. And when you controlled for that, uh, there's a 12% uh, unexplained pay gap, but this is going back to the 80s. And a lot of this is 80s, 90s data that they're talking about. 79, 80, 77. Come on, man. 1990 case. That's freaking 17 years ago. 72, 75. But this isn't really that bad information. It's just showing the arc of uh, the discrimination going away, basically. It doesn't debunk the new stuff at all. Okay. Yeah, I read the AEU report I, I cited, and earning 93% means that only 7% is unexplained, and nobody knows exactly how much of that is what. So you haven't debunked shit, I'm... I'm sorry to say. Actually, I'm not sorry to say, but, dude, I don't, Moose, I don't know what to tell you. If that's the best you got, you got shit. Like I said, the CONSAD report 
It's good fucking science. Nothing that you haven't shown me, nobody has shown anybody anything that contradicts the CONSAD report other than this fucking dead link to the fucking uh, comic site. Fuck. Seriously. This is your fucking debunking of CONSAD. Amp tunes. Seriously, man. Uh, what are you, a fucking conspiracy nut? The CONSAD Research Corporation. Why in the hell would they have any motive to lie to the Department of Labor? So they could never get a government contract again? They issued their report in 2009? Uh towards the very end of the Bush administration, knowing the Obama administration was going to come in and be a Democratic uh, Department of Labor for the next four, probably eight years, because we normally re-elect our presidents. you got to be a fucking tinfoil idiot to fucking think that you've debunked anything. They're a legitimate research corporation. I don't know what to tell you. Well, there you have it, folks. Um, Social justice fails.